me near the cross. Striking down the Philistine and killing him 
fell with no sword to David's hand. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. May God speak out this very sin of the Lord that God who brought the Apple of Egypt out of the house of bondage. That's the other God. Thank you. Lord, have mercy upon us and grant us hearts to keep this law. Uh, we had a wonderful introduction to our lesson by our superintendent, 
uh, Sister Annie Wall, and we are thankful today for all that are here and all that are tuned in. Uh, we are coming out of the book of Samuel today, uh, 1 Samuel. Um, it, it, it's a familiar story um, that a lot of people have um, been told or talked about or, or learned about through the years and uh, as small children, and they talked about David. Mm -hmm. uh, what do y'all know about David? What do y'all know about David? He's a little shepherd boy. He's a shepherd boy. What else was it? He's a pretty boy. He's a pretty boy. That's what it said. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was a pretty boy. You know, what else y'all know about David? He was a king. He was a king. Mm -hmm. He was a king. You know, who did, 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 did uh, his predecessor love him? Did Saul love him? No. No. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so I was jealous of him but to, to a degree. There was a lot of things that had happened. David had a lot of faith that he was a small uh, child in stature, um, the youngest of, of his brothers. And, and so there was a lot of things that went on. But this, we're in the book of Samuel. Samuel, as y'all know, was a prophet. And, and all of a sudden, there are some things that had occurred in from moving from judges to kings. And Israel was looking for a first king, and, and to give you a little background, all of a sudden Saul was appointed as first king, and all of a sudden there was a big thing going on. And there was always, if you look at the book of Samuel, and we first Samuel in the 17th chapter, we jump way over the 17th chapter, 31st through the 37th verse, uh, and then jump to the 45th verse and 48th through the 50th verse. But when you look at some of the background, you see that Saul is the king, and Saul is slain thousands. He's gone slain thousands. He's led the country fairly well, and, and, and all of a sudden, there's something that's transitioning here. They have a, a, a war infection between the Philistines and his country. So all of a sudden, Saul has his armies. He has his people. Uh, however, the Philistine, our pastor preached about this last Sunday. <laughs> He passed preached about this last Sunday. I took some notes last Sunday from his sermon. <laughs> but Pastor Martin preached about it. All of a sudden, there was a war infection. And the Philistines were uh, huge people. They were warriors. They were very, very good folks in fighting. They knew what they, to do. And they grew big. And there was a, a, a family of giants over there. And one of the giants was named Goliath. And we'll get there into that. In a few minutes, we'll get there in the, into that. But all of a sudden, here, good morning. All of a sudden, we have a giant here called Goliath, who has all of a sudden caused conflict. Now, if you saw a man nine feet tall, how would you feel? Would you be afraid? Yes. Now this guy is nine feet tall and he's selling the, the old folks you say selling wolf tickets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's walking around. Hey, is anybody? Anybody? Is, is there any boy? Is there anybody that wants to face me? Is there anybody that can defeat me? Is there anybody mm -hmm. that's willing to fight? Mm -hmm. And so he walks around. And he calls. He starts cussing God, our God, the true living God. He starts cursing and and putting down all of the people that are around them. And all of a sudden, Saul's army is sitting down. They are all concerned. They're sitting down. And, and, and all of a sudden, David goes out and he wonders what's going on. His brothers get upset with him because of the fact that he's coming to the war line. He's coming to the war line. Why are you here? You're, you're a little young boy. You should be here. But his father is sitting with some food. So all of a sudden, he goes to the war line and David's faith starts to show his mind starts to work. And all of a sudden, when the, this is where our lesson starts today, when Saul, when all of a sudden he says, when the words that David spoke were heard, they repeated them before Saul and he sent for them. David is coming in and said, somebody ought to fight. The other, the other words, somebody ought to do something. Somebody ought to realize that this man is going against our God and what, what he has done. And so he comes in and he says this in the 32nd verse David, the little shepherd boy, said to Saul, the king. He said this to Saul. Now, he had, this that says that he has faith. He's not faint at heart, that he is coming in and willing to go forward. He says, 
Let no one's heart fail because of him. Because of him being Goliath. Goliath is out there busting and he's going around and threatening and, and, and selling tickets, as I call them. And then it says, your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Now, how does Saul feel? Why do how y'all think Saul is feeling now? This boy is coming in and telling them, telling Saul, the king, you got your armies out there, but nobody will fight him. You know, I'll fight him. How is Saul? Do y'all what do y'all think Saul is thinking about that? <laughs> do y'all think Saul is, is believing him or you think Saul is saying, this is this guy, he's just playing a joke on me, you know, he's he's being trivial tri 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 or, or he's 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 not real. He's just coming in and saying some words. What do y'all think Saul is saying? He's saying he played music for me. <laughs> When I began to get mad, right? You're a musician. What you gonna do out here? Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. So forget that. Yeah, but he was Saul's musician. He was Saul's musician. Mm -hmm. And the pastor, uh, 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 Paul said, you know, he said, get your, get out of here, man. You, you know, you you just joking. You just teasing me. You cutting up with me. And so all of a sudden, he coming in and he didn't have that mindset. And 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 Saul is saying, you know, this, this guy can't be for real. And Saul comes in and he didn't kick him out. He came in, as Pastor said, he had a relationship with David. Mm -hmm. So he comes in and Saul said to David, in the 33rd verse, you are not able to go against the 15 to fight him for him, for you are just a boy. Mm -hmm. And he has been a warrior from his youth. What does that say? He's been trained from 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 young boy to, to fight and be a warrior. He, he's trained. He being a light, he's trained to fight and be a warrior. Yeah, yeah. However, what does that say about who God uses? Who can God use? Okay. Anybody. Anybody. Anybody, anytime, anywhere. That's right. All right, but Saul comes in and Saul is looking at what? The outside. He's looking at what he's thinking. He's looking at his, uh, he's using his emotions and he's looking at what he thinks that a young kid can do. But David comes in. And this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, um, three or four verses here. David comes in and pleads his case. He comes in and says, David said to Saul, King, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it out, rescuing the lamb from his mouth. And it turned against me. I would catch it by the jaw and strike it down and kill it. What is Paul telling? I mean, uh, what is um, uh, David telling Saul? I got this. Yeah. I got it. What else? What else? I, I've been in battle. I've fought. Bears and lions. With lions and bears. Now, you know, when you look at that, that that that's um, some people say it's symbolism because of the fact that it talks about us as Christians. It talks about us. Now how our Lord fights for us and does things. And so we come forth and he talks about this and he says this in a unique way that your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them since he has defiled the armies of the living God. What is David telling, telling Saul now? What is he telling Saul? I know what to do. God got me. God's got me. This man is going against the true and living God. This man is going against your armies. This, this man is going against everything we stand for. Somebody has to stay. And I'm willing to stand. So David said, in the 37th verse, and I'm running pretty fast because we got the tabs from the David said, the Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of the Philistines. And so Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Now, what is Saul doing? What is Saul telling David? 
Okay, why does Saul have a change of mind? Why does Saul have a change of mind? Lions and tigers. <laughs> and then God. Okay, well, he has come in and he has pleaded his case. He being David has come in and pleaded his case. He's come in and told Saul, I'm prepared. God has prepared me for this. All my life, I've been out there in the, the with my shepherd, I mean, with the shepherd and, and my sheep and my flock, my lamb. I've been out there. I've seen things. I've fought and I've warred. And I've, I've fought against lions and bears and all kinds of enemies. And I know that this Philistine will be just like one of them in a war infection. So he comes in and David has preparation. God has prepared him for what is going to transition. And it jumps in through this verse and it goes on over and to the 45th verse. It says, but David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. What is David telling this, 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 this Goliath, this, this Philistine? What is he telling? He's coming against the Almighty God. He's coming against God. He has faith. Love God. He God. loves, loves God. The God of hosts, the God of many, the God, God, he's coming in and he is coming. He's not going to have a, all this armor. Saul so tried to give him his armor, but he, so David said his armor was too heavy. It was too much. But he went with the armor. The, we call it the total armor of God. He put on the total helmet, the breastplate, and everything of God. Knowing that God is good. So all of a sudden, it jumps over. And the lesson jumps over because they're trying to fit it all in. Only thing David had was a sling, as they say. A slingshot, as we call it. And some stones. And all of a sudden, now let, let's ask this question. It might be rhetorical, but anyway, was uh, David that good of a shot? <laughs> was he that good of a shot that he could throw a stone and hit the Goliath right in the center of the head? He was God. God. <laughs> yeah. There you go. He was God. He that directed that stone. It was God. It says now to. To, to make a, a point in picture, make a picture here, he comes in and says, when the Philistine, which is, which is Goliath, drew near to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. So he, he, didn't, he didn't turn around and run the other way. You know, Goliath thought he was going to bully him. And said, David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. It says, the stone sank in his forehead and he fell that face down on the ground. Now all of a sudden, did David throw that hard? No. 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 Because of his faith. Because of what he believed in. Because of the fact that he knew the Lord and had a relationship with the Lord, he prevailed. And so he comes in and said, in this latter verse, it's in the 15th verse, it says, So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, striking down the Philistine and killing him. There was no sword in David's hand. So all he had was the sling and the stone. Now, realize that in our lives, we have a relationship with the Lord. And the Lord will fight our battles. Realize that. We have to have faith. You heard what Sister Wall talked about in the introduction. We have to have faith and know that God is God and that God will fight your battles. Pastor, you come forth and, and please talk to us a little bit about this lesson. It's a good lesson. I got a lot of other stuff, but I'm going to let you go ahead and talk, Pastor. Amen. You could have went and read on the head and finished up because you had so much. Let us realize something about, uh, yeah. about the Saul. I know we talk about David a lot, but let's say a few things about Saul. Mm -hmm. The whole army was doing what? They're sitting they're down. They're they're down. Down. And here come David, right? Yes. Talking to Saul. But the Goliath said this, send somebody out, let them fight against me, and if you win the whole war, we'll be over with. If I win, then we take over everything 
Yeah. And the whole arm, right. and, and the war would be over with. Mm -hmm. So, Saul so had to have some kind of stuff going on yes, in order to trust who? David, David. right? Yes, sir. David got up and started preaching. That's what happened. Yes. Look here. God done, done, done this. God done, done that. Yes. And remember now, he's not, he not saying this in front of, uh, by himself. He's saying this in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, he's talking to David. And, and uh, I mean, Saul saying, look, God. 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 We are God. God. And remember, all the wars that they were fighting in before when they brought the Ark of Covenant, yes, right? Yep. And they won the war, right? Yes, sir. You, you with me? Okay. So here, Saul is like, okay. So Saul is putting on the line the whole nation. Yes, sir. That's what we're missing. So Saul had to have faith in God. Uh-huh. Through David, uh -huh. to send him out there yes. to do something. Yeah. Otherwise, the whole what Israel would have been what in slavery That's would have it. been took over. That's it. Amen. That's Y'all see that? Yeah. We missed that little bit because Saul had done so much, and you know David's going to be king, and so we focus on that. But look, presidents, pastors, uh -huh. administrators, yeah. all of those things. Know their people. Yes, sir. Yes. And listen to their people. You with me? Good ones anyway. <laughs> you with me? In order to get what needs to be done. And remember, they were out there just sitting. Yes. Nothing going on. Because nobody wanted to go out there. So he sent who? David out there. But David had the faith that God would do whatever needed to be done through him in order to get this giant. Heals. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what you're missing. Yes, so you sometimes we have to, this is me now, have faith in those that have faith yes. in God. You with me? Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. You sure that makes sense? You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the pastor coming with the vision. The vision looks too big. Amen? But the pastor say, I got faith God to show me this. God's going to bring us through. And then you're going to have faith in my faith of hearing God, with, that God is giving me the vision, and God's going to bring it through. You with me? Yeah. So how is your faith? Is your faith strong enough to step out against any giants that come up against Capitol AME Church? Is your faith strong enough to, to, to stop you in, in anger? To lead church when you know God is here, called you here to do what you need to do, and you stand, stand in the battle, stand in the church, uh, stand in the argument, stand uh, with us, knowing that whatever is whatever, going on, whatever. God's going to bring us through. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do you have faith in your prayers as the righteous when the Bible says the prayers of the righteous avail of much? We make mistakes. Yeah. So what do we need to do? Have faith. Pray to God. Say, God, we need to get back on track. God, we need to pay for the pastor. God, we need to pray for the pro tip. God, we need to pray for the Sunday school superintendent. I ain't going nowhere. I know that this is where I need to be. God, I know you're here. God, you're going to fix this thing. Thank you, Lord. You see the faith? Do you have that kind of faith? A lot of people will give up. A lot of people will quit. I can't do this. I fail. I didn't do good as Brother Curtis. You uh -huh. ain't Brother Curtis. <laughs> God's using who? You. 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 And you. That's and you. That's you got to have faith that God can use you to do what needs to be done. Thank and if you don't know, trust God that God will send somebody there to help you and assist you to get what's done to need to get you the resources to get what needs to be done done. 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 David went out there with a, a rock. With rock. Three stones. Three stones. And a slingshot. <laughs> Huh? And then talk junk back to the. Amen. Hey, <laughs> Hello? Hey, he did. Yes. And my God will. He will. He will bring us out. He will bring us through. He will grow us here. He will. He will make Camp Hope a resource, a light in the midst of the dark. Thank you, Lord. He will allow Camp Hope to move from this area to all across the world if we have faith to move forward, to let God use us to do what thus saith the Lord. Yes. WMS, be the missionary. Thank you. Thank you, Lord.
CDMC, the youth is on the way. Thank you, Lord. They Sunday school superintendent is about to be full. Yeah, yeah. Thank Stewart you, Lord. is about to get forward. That God's going to increase the duty, increase the membership, increase the finance yeah, to yeah. do what needs to be done. Trustees, get ready. Get ready. The land is on its way. Thank you, Lord. To get what needs to be done in order to grow us to the point that we need to do that God can use us to make a difference, not just in Macon, but the surrounding areas, not just the surrounding areas, but all across the world. Thank you. Can you have the faith? Thank you, Lord. To do what thus saith the Lord and follow his vision. Faith. David did. David did. Thank you, Lord. David did. So not just the faith of David, the faith of Sister Walla. Not just the yeah. faith of David, but the faith, the, yeah. the, the, yeah. the, 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 the faith of Sister Williams. Not yeah. just the faith of Sister yeah. Williams, but the faith of Sister Brenda. Not just yeah. the faith yeah. of Sister yeah. Brenda, but the yeah. faith of the both of the Lord. The faith yeah. of Paul, Reverend Paul, the faith of Dr. Martin, the faith of Camp O. Yeah. Can you have the faith? Thank you, Lord. To do what needs to be done. Yeah. If you take one step, God will take two. They will. Bad. You take two steps, God will take six. Yeah. And no matter how far back you go, God is the one that's allowing you to get knocked back, to get you back on course, to do what we need to do in order to fulfill God's great commission. Thank you, Lord. The faith of David, and I'll re say the faith of Capital Amy Church. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Well,